Yasu, intrepid viewers, thanks so much for your comments. I didn't realize how many intrepid viewers were Greeks and Italians. So thanks for all your personal comments. It's great. And it's interesting, the conversations I'm having here, because of course, millions of Greeks and Italians went to the US in the 20s, 30s and 40s, and then again post-war, and they were instrumental along with uh, the Jewish community in New York and so forth for improving labor conditions, you know, in that time. So they're fiercely oriented to the rights of workers. And so explaining modern America, um, they are often incredulous because so many migrants, particularly after World War II in the US, when jobs were secure, did well or did very well. And so it's hard for them to get their heads around how difficult working conditions are in contemporary America. And I explained to people that um, there's very poor job conditions. Even if you have a relatively white collar job, it's unlikely you're going to get four weeks or six weeks paid annual leave from the first year that you work somewhere and so on. And they go, why don't they protest? Why don't they strike? And I say, well, people are afraid of losing their jobs. I say, but this isn't work. This is exploitation, you know. So when I explain the long hours most Americans work, when do they see their families? When do they eat? <laughs> it's just a completely different mindset. And when I talk about people having huge hex debts for decades, can they say, well, well, that would mean just only rich people can get an education and poor people end up with all that debt. Why don't they strike? Why don't they protest? <laughs> so that's the answer to everything. So um, I just thought I'd share that with you. Now, today, of course, I'm working up to the Ukraine read. But first, I wanted to see price rises on food and fuel. Sorry, the light keeps going in and out. Um, and they go together because the price of food goes up when the price of fuel goes up because modern farms are big industrial things and then there's the cost of transport. So food and fuel, I want to know if the prices escalating will impact on the midterms because of course if people thought about it for one minute it would be exactly the same under the republicans but most people just think look the dems are in and the prices are going up you know how it is so will that be an issue rising prices I'm sure it'll be an issue, but whether it'll be, you know, a decisive issue is the question. Will it be a big issue? Let's have a look. Like I explained last time, um, it's too hard to bring the screen up and down in this setup I've got. Hold on, I'll just adjust the computer. Have to get rid of the empty wine bottles. Just joking. I'm moving the vitamins. Okay. So will it be a big issue? Okay, I think it will. Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, we have justice here, so at least the conversation will be had. It's followed by the Ten of Pentacles, big money, but also the Ten of Pentacles is about intergenerational wealth. So I think the problem with these price rises, which I think will be quite long lasting for obvious reasons, you know, the world um, fuel supplies are all disrupted. Obviously, it's going to go on. This is going to be another nail in the coffin of intergenerational aspirations. So since World War II, every generation of parents has expected and usually seen their kids do a bit better than they did, right? 
And that's now at risk everywhere before this. You know, kids can't afford to rent, they can't afford to buy, they can't afford to leave home. If home's a nightmare, that's a nightmare in itself, etc. So this is an intergenerational issue. It's impacting people of all ages. Now, we have here a couple of cards that are interesting because we've got a king and a queen coming up. I think with the, the Ten of Swords, this is the consumer. You know, they just keep feeling another thing it is getting at me and stopping me having a life, you know. People are sick of it. But always remember Tens, and there's two of them, are the peak of something. So in other words, after the 10 comes the ace and a new beginning because something has to break through, you know. But I think the consumers will be really feeling it. So the king of wands here, I think is, because the king of wands is usually um, someone who's quite reasonable. It's the king and queen of wands. So in a way, this isn't my Biden card, but I think this is being able to explain to the voters what is going on. I think there'll be a man and a woman who can explain what's going on. Katie Porter for president, please. So I think it will be an issue. I think um, it's ever more important that the Dems pull young people forward. And I also think Biden needs to deliver on um, student loans and either wipe them out or slash a lot of them. I think they're stalled at the moment. Is that the story? Let me know in the comments. Repayments have been stalled, but it has to go further than that. Big slashes. Yeah. So, okay, that leads us to really, I hope the Dems are working day and night to register as many people as they humanly can. And of course, what we want is all those who believe the stop the steal, stay home. If it's that bad, stay home. Take your poxy vote with you and stay behind closed doors. So let's have a toe in the water on the midterms. Don't forget, this is not me saying this is going to happen, no. It's such a volatile living issue, we'll keep looking at it. So let's have a look right now with the energies around now, what is happening? What is happening with the midterms? Midterms. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I had to pull more cars because it was such a story. Oh, my word. Okay. This is people not being impressed with what they're being offered by either side. And this is typical. Australia's going into an election cycle. Please, God, we get rid of Scotty from marketing. Mind you, our Labor guy, the equivalent of the Dems, is so uninspiring, he, he's like a walking Valium, you know, like he is so dull, I can't begin to tell you. Anyway, I digress. This is pe people, and it's typical at this stage before an election, oh, they're both the same, they're, they're as bad as each other, what's the point? None of them care about me, which is probably not a million miles from the truth, okay? So this is how the voters are feeling. Secret agendas at work, well, you better believe it. Of course there are. And I'm making my way through um, House of Cards again, um, binge watching late at night. And both sides, you know, working on it. just do this, just do that. You know, both sides are being a bit sneaky about this. And then along comes the King of Pentacles. This is you know who. This is what's left of the Yeti and his pulling power and the hideousness that is the modern GOP. This is all of that. See, this guy has everything 
money, power, riches. Not enough, just like Mary Trump's book, too much, but not enough. Right? He's a pig. I've never liked the King of Pentacles, I have to tell you. Okay, you shouldn't have cards you don't like, but I do. Never, never been a fan of the King of Pentacles anyway. So I do stress in fairness, it's, it's the Dems as well doing the secret thing. Then along comes the Yeti. And another blatant attempt to steal an election. And I got that far and went, oh, well, probably not a surprise. And then I thought I'll pull another couple of cards. Card of Karma, the Wheel of Fortune. This is American um, karma in a sense, to have to fight for the right thing. We cannot assume, those of us who are my generation, I know I only looked, you know, middle, but I'm not, nearly 70. Okay. Those of us who have been around the Wheel of Fortune a few times, we went out in the streets, we did all that, we did our best. But not only do we have to get back in the saddle, are we not sick of this? My more mature, intrepid viewers. But everyone who has a heart and who has a brain needs to fight for their democracies now. This is global. Because these power blocks have been entrenched everywhere. They used to always be big players, but there was also the other side. Now they're everywhere. But I'm pleased to report, phew, my final card, my card for everything that's positive about the USA. So I'm very pleased. So remember this, the point is we are light workers. If you've been watching this channel, you are a light worker. And I mean, not just me, any of the readers, astrologers who deal with this stuff, you're a light worker. You're instinctively drawn to the bigger picture. Because let's face it, the day-to-day -day stuff is very demanding and difficult. So it's ever more important to keep the higher ground and see this as a karmic turn of the wheel. Right. Now, here we go. So while I'm shuffling in Michigan, yet another black man shot in the back of the head, that's a big clue, isn't it? Back of the head. Now, traffic infringement. Now, yes, he tried to run. Well, that's also understandable. Now, this is the thing. We look at Saudi Arabia that has public executions and the world goes, how barbaric, how primitive, how appalling. And yet the US has public executions every week of black motorists for traffic infringements. I'm sorry, call it what it is. Executions on the street. It's appalling. It's absolutely appalling. Anyway, um, Let me focus, what's my question? Now, this is like the election. I'm going to ask how long or the next developments in the Ukrainian conflict, right? Now, this is not an end game read. This is how it's looking from now. Because of course, something could happen to Putin tomorrow and it might take a different trajectory. Trajectory, trajectory, thank you. Um, I don't know if you picked up on it. During the week, the Ukrainians have captured a Russian oligarch. I think they've got a few. But this one, Putin is the godfather to his daughter. Now, I'm sorry, if you're a godparent, you're very close to that person, right? Now, I don't think he's close to a lot of oligarchs. They have deals and stuff, but this is personally close, right? And he's been captured, not killed. And to me, that might be a weird distinction, but I think it is a distinction. If he'd been killed outright, it would be one thing. 
but he's alive and a prisoner. And I think this is going to make Putin even more mad. So, and he's capable of anything. Oh God, help us all. So let's just have a look from now through to the end of May. The Ukraine conflict from now to the end of May. From now to the end of Ukraine. Hmm. Oh, there are the oligarchs. Uh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. We tend to forget with Putin. He's one of the main oligarchs himself, right? He's because he's turned up here. He's personally wealthy beyond what you and I could even calculate in our wildest dreams so the thing with rich people and i don't mean just people who are comfortably off i'm talking about massive wealth where you bend the world to suit you right he's used to that he's turned up here are the other oligarchs protecting the good life but they're an living the lifestyle but that's becoming a burden to putin because more and more you only have to put on msnbc or cnn or anything and you've got another oligarch talking um, about putin in a critical way so those who were his best friends six weeks ago are now becoming a burden to him the ukrainians Knight of Pentacles, bless. They are just holding firm, right? Now, in another context, you will have heard me say often this can be the card of the mercenary and it could be talking about the mercenaries of Putin, but that's not the vibe I get at all with this. They are not going anywhere, Vladimir. So Putin, if you're listening, this is them, they're not going to go away. They're not going to cave in. And they have got allies on their side. And I think the allies will be contributing more. We've got to remember too, because we all were desperately hoping this would be very quick, a disaster for Putin and be over. But that's not how it's playing out. But the allies, are coming on board. They are there for him. Okay. So that's my update for now. I'm off. I guess I'll do another bit of eating. So I just want to say one thing. You haven't lived till you've been to a drag show in Athens. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll leave you with that thought. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao.